Hey, Coach Good morning. Welcome. Go ahead, Coach. Thank you, Mark. Ready. Yep. Great. I thought uh, practice was good yesterday and today, so we're, we're off to a good start with this week. The guys are excited about playing a, a good ranked team. It, it's it's different from where we were, but, but now we're in a position where we're uh, a – ranked team playing a ranked team. And, and that didn't happen to us last year. We were never ranked. So uh, the guys are having to learn to, to handle that better. Um, as far as who they're going to play, because they've had people in and out, uh, we're preparing to play the best players at every position. And and that's just that's just what it is. Their, their offense is really good. Uh, they're, they're running the ball better than anybody in the country except Army and Air Force. And uh, those two, uh, really don't throw the ball very much. So they're, they're uh, the best running offense with a conventional offense in the country. Um, and they've got uh, 13 sacks and 30 quarterback hurries. So uh, Virginia Tech's a really good team. And um, I think it's uh, um, it, it'll be fun for us to have that challenge. So you go back to the last two games. Two years ago, we lost, I think, with 19 seconds left and, and lost a lead. And then last year, it was six overtime. So uh, the games come down to, to, to the, the last play of the game, last seconds of the game for the last two years. And uh, we expect this one to be a, a great one on Saturday. We're glad that we'll have some fans and some students, and, and we're really happy about the players' families being able to come to the game. Uh, that'll be uh, special for them since they have not been able to, to get in um, in the first two games. Jeremy, I lost something here. Must have hit it with my. Sorry about that, guys. Didn't try to get rid of you, but fumbled. Um, we have talked about, uh, some people have asked, and we have talked about seniors that might want to come back. It's entirely too early to, to start making those decisions because of eligibility rules. Some will have a, a, a better feel of the NFL at the end of the year. Uh, then you've got to look at the graduate path that some would have to take if they're graduating to get, they've got to get in graduate school. Um, some might want to grad transfer somewhere else if, if they've got a better chance to play. And, and then some may just want to go into the job market. So uh, people have asked me, have we, we talked to the seniors? It's just too early to start making some of those decisions. Uh, people have also asked about Patrice Renee and, and Cam Kelly. Uh, their rehab was delayed because of COVID, because they couldn't be at the office and couldn't work with our training staff. Uh, they are better now. Um, I do think they'll both play uh, this weekend, really, for the first time. Uh, so it gives them a chance to, to play more. Um, usually it takes about nine months for a knee, and with theirs it took more like a year uh, just because of the, um, the, the lack of being able to, to work out with our training staff and our strength staff like they wanted to. Uh, this freshman class is special. Uh, I think next year's is probably better that's coming in if we'll uh, get all the guys that, that we've got uh, committed to us. But I was just thinking about, uh, again, Jeremy says a lot of people ask about names. KJ Binkley's up to like 310 um, and he's walking and he's, he's uh, exercising, but he will not be back till spring. Uh, but we expect him to be a really good player. Clyde Pender broke his fingers, broke his hands, so he's he's working his way back, and he's doing some good things in practice. Miles Murphy, Cayman Rucker, Des Evans, uh, Tony Grimes, um, Jaquarius Conley, those guys are all playing already. Uh, Josh Downs has played a little bit on offense. We've just got a lot more guys back on offense than, than we had on defense. And one of the things that it, it, it puts you in a, a tough spot is you're, you're excited about your new guys uh, but by not playing Charlotte, we missed a lot of snaps. So we've got guys in the Boston College game that haven't played before um, at the end of the game trying to win the game. So we're, we're trying to develop depth for the season, but at the same time still trying to win the game with all these young guys. So uh, that, that makes it uh, a little bit tougher. And uh, the last thing before I answer questions is um, um, our entire team is registered to vote. Uh, so that's something that, that we've worked on, and uh, they have requested that. They asked that we get a, a voting place on campus. Uh, that's not uh, something that we have control of. I think the city 
of Chapel Hill has control of that. But other than that, we've had one Zoom meeting about voting. Uh, we would never tell them who to vote for, obviously, but it's, it's our job to uh, try to help them learn how to vote and answer any questions about voting that they've got. Questions? All right, group, uh, use the raise hand function. And uh, like we uh, always do, please state your name and your media affiliation. First up is Aaron Beard today. Hey, Mac, Aaron Beard with the AP. This might be a stupid question, so tell me if it is, but you've talked a lot this week about needing to be patient for the deep ball, you know, not pushing it down, take what's there, a four yard play is good enough. Is there a way to practice that? I mean, you got to run your offense in practice. I mean, obviously you tell a guy when you're watching film, but is there anything you can do to practice that? I think just, uh, Aaron, it's number one, it's not a stupid question. Uh, and number two, this team is going through a lot of different emotions like that one offensively uh, as a team, because last year, nobody thought we were going to be any good. So they never got any credit. And then we win two games, we get some credit, we didn't handle it well, and then we lose three games. Uh, so we're, 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 we're a team that nobody on this team has beaten Virginia Tech. Nobody on this team has been ranked before. So it's, uh, uh, there are a lot of things that we're having to deal with uh, every day. And, and when you start talking about offense, uh, the offense got so much credit in the offseason about they're going to be so much better next year. Well, they were good last year. So, um, and, and we've played two good defensive teams. So I, I really think the thing that you have to do is just continue to say, here's what they're giving us. You, you, if you're going to beat somebody deep and they're staying way back, you just got to outrun them. Or you've got to use play action to draw them up and, and get it over their head instead of just trying to, to uh, please everybody and, and score every time. And, and there's absolutely no doubt that we've changed expectations in a short period of time. And uh, people last year were hoping we'll win. Now they're expecting us to win. People last year were impressed when we moved the ball and scored. We scored 31 points in the opening ball game and we shut it down with eight to 10 minutes left to go in the game. People are griping that we didn't score enough. Uh, so it's, uh, it, it's just, it is what it is. And these young people read and they hear and their families talk to them about, man, why aren't we scoring more points? And why is Daz getting the ball? Why is so-and-so getting the ball? Why didn't he get it more? Uh, so it, it continues that uh, Phil Longo has one of the worst jobs in the country. Thanks, Mac. A lot of offensive coordinators out there. <laughs> All right, let's and go over to Dina King. Some, and Mark, I'm sorry, some probably on this call. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Let's go over to Dina King. Not Dina. <laughs> hey, Coach. Hey, um, obviously, a big game for the program in all faces and i'm going to focus in on recruiting you guys recruit virginia tech the same territory same players how big of a game is that on the recruiting front for you guys well dana i had uh, coach gene stallings told me one time he said they're all big games and if you don't think they are try to lose one and then it becomes a big game so uh, that that's what we've told our players. Don't don't think for one minute that one's any bigger than the other one, because if you lose uh, if you lose this one, is Florida State bigger or less? I, I mean, you just so you you've got to win every one of them. That that's what people want. That's what we want. That's what the expectations are. And anything less than that, it's not as good as we want. I've never thought that just winning a game um, affects recruiting. The the Texas OU game every year was. We got that question asked every day, but I think young guys now are choosing. They're, they're choosing early, and and they're they're not just choosing on who wins this game. Or if that's the case, the NC State game would be huge. In State, the Wake Forest game, the Duke game, every game then becomes a recruiting game. I think they want to come to your program if they think you can win overall. But I've never felt like one game makes a guy's opinion of whether he likes that school or not. Thank you. Thank you. All right, C.L. Brown, go ahead. Uh, C.L. Brown with the uh, News and Observer. Mac, I was curious what your philosophy was in terms of uh, tackling as the season moves on, as you know, as you get away from August in the fall camp when you were trying to get guys acclimated back to, uh, to a point where you're preserving, maybe more preserving their bodies later in the season. How, how do you handle just 
how much you want those guys going full in practice? See, so, uh, we have uh, we work on all of our tackling drills every day uh, with individual coaches. We very rarely tackle eleven on eleven or seven on seven after the season starts. So, um, and and we've done a good job so far of not missing many tackles. I think we broke fifteen tackles maybe Saturday and missed seven. Uh, and we, we look at that every week, but we, we work really, really hard on pursuit angles, uh, tackling position, and, and we tackle a lot in practice, but we use it mostly in drills. Um, uh, you, you usually get your guys hurt uh, when you're, you're uh, twisting guys up in seven on seven or knocking guys into each other's legs uh, in, in a scrimmage type situation. Yeah, and does any of that change because of COVID in 2020? Like, does any, the way you manage that change because of the condition we're in right now? It really hasn't. We've always practiced that way. Um, and, and it's, um, uh, we even, um, uh, it was funny, we, because we didn't know the kids very well, we had a live scrimmage in spring practice, and Urban Meyer was standing next to me, and he said, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you're tackling. Uh, it's just different now. And a lot of people are working on tackling a lot more than, than the hitting, but because of um, really because of lack of depth and numbers as much as anything else. And uh, through the years, I've asked uh, Coach Paterno and Coach Bowden and Coach Gene Stallings, uh, how many plays do you scrimmage a great player like in the spring? Um, and they always told me, Coach Paterno said, don't scrimmage them. Don't scrimmage a great running back. Because I had one that I lost in the, the spring. Uh, Coach Royal told me not to scrimmage him. He, he lost Earl Campbell in a, a scrimmage, so don't don't scrimmage him. Uh, Coach Stallings told me it's uh, Marcus Jones was uh, out here, and Coach Stallings used to say, "Let them play about seven plays. That the great ones need to play, but they they don't need to to have all the younger ones falling into them because you can get one hurt." Uh, and I remember we, we had Marcus Jones in on a scrimmage for seven plays. And on the seventh play, somebody fell into his knee and hurt him. So I, I started thinking maybe six plays is better than seven. So uh, it, it's just a, a philosophy to try to figure out exactly what you need to do. But uh, uh, our, our philosophy has obviously worked and the, the process is working. And uh, what we told our players is you've really got to work to make this process work. You've got to work on your pursuit angle every time. And we have to do a great job in, in video calling out guys that uh, didn't hustle 100%, didn't take the proper angle, and weren't in the right position to tackle. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Next up is Andrew Jones. Hey, Coach. I've covered a lot of coaches in the past that were okay with when they're getting ready to play an opponent. They were okay with their players using previous results against that team to kind of help add a lot of fuel to their week in preparation going into that game. And then some other coaches didn't want them to look back at all. They just wanted them looking forward, worry about yourself. You can't change the past, even with a win this coming week. What is your philosophy on that? Andrew, we're, we're about facts. We, we, we just try to tell them the truth and exactly what happened. The truth is, these two teams in this game have been really, really close the last two years and give them credit. They've won the game. The two years before that were blowouts because I, I, I try, I like to look at the history. I like to look at who we are and, and what we've done. And um, I, I told the guys, if, if we were ready to have won the game at Virginia tech last year, we would have won it. We were ready to win at Boston college in a similar situation, but we weren't ready at Pitt. We weren't ready for whatever reason. And, and I told them, if we're ready this weekend, we'll, we'll do our best and win the game. If we're not, then we'll go back and get ready for Florida State and move forward. Uh, our program's really a little bit uh, uh, publicly ahead of where I think it is. Uh, we've still got some work to do. We've still got a lot of youth. Um, we've gotten a lot of credit. Um, I'm, I'm still not sure we, we know who we are yet. Uh, so we've got to improve, and we've got to continue to work. Uh, but I, I don't think there's anything wrong with I, I look at their first two games. I look at our first two games. I look at the stats from the last two years, even though we weren't here two years ago. I look at the scores. I look at the players. Um, I, I really think the more information they have, uh, the more prepared they are for the game. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Let's go to Mark Armstrong. 
Uh, Mac, back to the uh, registering to vote. What what do you think is the general sense of your players? Are they all motivated to be active, uh, or does it feel like a chore to them? Uh, what's the general attitude? No, Mark. We uh, when when we we've, we've had all of our hard discussions about COVID and social injustice. They actually that was one of their their requests. Uh, I said, "What do you want? Uh, you you tell me what you want. And we'll we'll see if we can do it." And and that it went through the leadership committee to start with, but they, they wanted to have everybody to get an opportunity to vote. And they wanted us to help them, some of them that didn't know how to vote, vote. We've got a couple of 17 year olds that, that can't vote. Uh, but, but by and large, they asked. And, and I felt like I, I probably haven't done a very good job of this in the past. But since they asked as a team, I, I thought it was something that we really needed to step up and, and help. And, and uh, it's something that uh, people are encouraging young people across the country and athletes for sure to to get involved with voting. And um, again, I think it's something that I've never done a very good job of because I've stayed so far out of politics uh, that that I thought it's not my place. And, and what it is, it's my place to help young people understand the opportunities that they have if they want to vote. And And I never did a very good job with that. So uh, it, it's really important uh, for me uh, to make sure that they're educated uh, on the candidates. Uh, they're educated on how to vote, uh, but we would never, ever tell them who to vote for. Yeah, just as a brief follow up. I mean, I, I think I saw in the NBA some stat that only 20 percent had registered to vote last year versus 90 some this year. Do you think there's a kind of a, an athlete wide sense of activation in this regard? Mark, I don't know. You know, that that would be interesting. I, again, I'm probably the, the least political person in the country. Um, when uh, President Clinton came to speak at North Carolina, he was walking down the hallway and actually turned to Sally and said, is he a Republican or a Democrat? Um, that, that's how bad I am with politics. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of learning with the, with the young people here. And uh, I am going to vote. Um, I haven't very often in the past. Uh, but but I am because I, I think it's important um, for for all of us to vote, and it, it's hard to gripe about anything in your country if you if you didn't vote. So uh, and young people mark more than ever before, and especially athletes seem to want a voice about a lot of different things right now. So I think it's important that we let them have that voice. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Greg Barnes, go ahead. Hey, Mac, uh, a lot of things were kind of the same when you came back, uh, but Virginia Tech was not in the league uh, when you were here prior, and that's kind of blown up to be a you know, significant rivalry. Um, what, I just wanted your perspective on that, kind of adding a new team to the mix. Uh, Virginia's been there before, obviously, State Duke, but Virginia Tech's kind of been very big, both in the standings as well as on the recruiting trail. Greg, it's a, it's a great thought because I was here thinking about next week. I was here when Florida State came in the league. Uh, so that was unique and new. And I'm, I'm thoughts and prayers for Coach Bowden. As, as I read yesterday, he went in the hospital because I, I definitely want to talk to him next week if I can. And uh, he whipped me enough. I, I helped him get in the Hall of Fame. So he, he, should, uh, he should like me a lot. Um, but I, I, I do think the closer you are to a, a, a school, to a university, um, the bigger rival it usually is because the the fans have to go to church together they have to work together they have to eat together so they pick at each other and that's what rivals are all about so as i was thinking this week you've got wake forest you've got duke and you've got state that are natural rivals in your state uh, but then you've got virginia and virginia tech because they're your rival state and they're right here together and there's no question that our fans will feel very passionate about winning every game, but more passionate about winning the ones when they have friends from those universities. So, so yeah, th this becomes a, a game that uh, is really important to our fan base. Thanks, Mac. Thank you, Greg. All right, next up is Zach Braziller. Hey, Mac. Um, wanted to ask you about, about Trevor Lawrence and just what – what kind of how good of a prospect is he and just kind of when you faced him and when you've watched film what what's the biggest thing that stands out Trevor Lawrence is, is one of the best to ever play he's uh, six six he's gigantic when you stand out there next to him on the, the field um, 
I guess he weighs 230 or something, and he he runs faster than everybody else on the field. So I don't know how fast it is, but he's real fast. And he started using his, his uh, feet a lot more than he did uh, early. He's, uh, he's tall. He's hard to bring down. He, he made a great play against us where we could have sacked him last year. And he, he spun out of the tackle to his left and threw the ball down the field. It was a, a huge play in that ball game. Um, he's competent. Um, he, he doesn't rattle. He's very smart. Um, he's very accurate. Um, you're, you're sure not going to bat any balls down when he's 6'6", six, six and, and he's, he's got the, a tall release. So um, I, I think he's a uh, first-round pick and, and one of the best players I've ever seen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Alyssa Ray, go ahead. Hey, Coach, such an odd lead up to that Boston College game, having three weeks off. Does this week of practice feel more normal, kind of like you guys are more in the swing of things and it's back to your regularly scheduled season almost? Elisa, it really does. The, uh, that was the strangest thing to be off three weeks. And I, I thought we handled it as well as we could. Whoever knows. You know, we, we still haven't played consistently well on offense. And, and probably we've, we've talked about what Aaron talked about, uh, being more patient. Um, maybe even more than that, we haven't finished drives. We've started good drives. We haven't finished enough on them. We're, we've messed something up with penalties or, or a sack. And, and sacks and penalties are, are drive stoppers. Those are, those are really hard to overcome. So um, I don't think there's anything as important as playing. You can practice and practice and practice, but you and you can uh, you, you can put yourself in a position where you're trying to create urgency. There, there's no urgency like urgency in a game. Your defense sees your offense every day, so they get very comfortable playing against each other and they play the plays, and that's bad habits and 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 vice versa. Uh, you don't have game plans, so it, it's uh, it, it's really hard uh, to to get better. And I think the biggest thing uh, with, with the improvement from the first week to the second week, all the mistakes you make in the first game, you correct, and you're, you're more prepared for those the second week. So this is, this is more like the second week of the season for us. Because Syracuse has been so long ago, it's hard to even remember. We've seen your offense put up good numbers, but kind of like you mentioned, it feels like they haven't hit their potential yet and only two games in it explains why but what do you hope to see out of those guys considering all the weapons that you have and what have the, what's the progress you've seen up to this point uh, the biggest thing Alyssa, is i want them to relax and play i, I think they're they're playing um with with too much pressure they're, they're playing that we got to go score all the time and nobody's going to score all the time and then they get frustrated when they don't and that's the patience we're talking about uh, but I, they, they've got to get the, the burden off their back uh, and go have some fun and play. And, and that's it. Sam's uh, got so many expectations that he's got to fulfill. And then, uh, like I, we talked about after the game, who do you throw it to? Choffrey catches more balls than Daz, and everybody panics. Uh, Choffrey's a good player, too. I mean, it's uh, – and then your two backs are really good. And then your offensive line's been in and out and banged up. And so I, I, I feel like that uh, – uh, we need to take a deep breath on offense. Um, and the defenses we've played have probably been better than, than at least one of the offenses. Syracuse offense was struggling when we played them. Uh, but we just got to take a deep breath and go play and go have some fun and not, not uh, I don't mind us expecting to score every play. That'd be great. I don't, I don't mind us expecting to score every drive. That would be great. But you can't do it if you're trying to force it. You just got to play. And, and I haven't felt like our offense has just relaxed and played yet. And in no better situation than that 746 left in the game, we're at the 29-yard line going in to put the game away. Go score, man. Just go score. Don't, and we have to mess it up. And, and there were two penalties. One of them um, probably should have been picked up. But, but you look at it, we, we have the, the jump call and the deep throw. It's incomplete. Then we have a penalty. Then we have a penalty. And then we miss a long field goal. So we, we just, that's a situation where go finish the game. It, it, go score. If you get three, it's probably over. If you get seven, it's definitely over. And you kill some clock while you're doing it. So we've got to, we got to play smarter football. And that's on coaches. That's on us. We, we can coach better than we did in some of those situations Saturday. Thanks, coach. Thank you.
Okay, Ross Martin, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I was wondering what your philosophy is for, for rotating players in, given, you know, trying to rest some during the game, trying to get young players some reps, and also obviously trying to win the game with your best players. Ross, do you, are you always outside, or do you just have a better backdrop than everybody else? Yeah, I'm in my back, back patio. It's a beautiful day outside in, in Chapel Hill. It, it really is. You just you look like you could go hunting right behind your house. So Come on over for a beer anytime, Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I, I just won't go there. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I normally would, but I get in trouble, so I won't. Uh, uh, Ross, it's it's uh, it's it's one of the 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 real questions that we've got right now. And I, I was probably spent forty five minutes to an hour talking to our coaches about it yesterday. Uh, I constantly harp on developing depth. So then they put a young one in the game. Uh, the last drive of the Boston College game, I'm screaming, "Get him out, man! It's the last drive of the game. We got to win the game." So it's a it's a real issue for us right now to try to get these young ones to come on and come on and come on and play when it matters, but still be able to substitute um, and and not play. We don't want to play Taman Fox sixty plays. That's too much, and and we did that last week. Now, uh, our Cameron Rucker and and um, Des Evans ready? Uh, can Chris Collins come in and, and play enough to, to let Hopper and, and, and Fox rest? Those are things that we're dealing with right now that you look at. And, you've, and Boston College played us better than we thought. We got to play a lot of guys against Syracuse. That's where it hurts us that we didn't have Charlotte. We would have played a lot of guys. We would have had game experience for them, which we don't have now. Uh, so we're just having to look at putting those guys in the game. And and then even more so last week, uh, Jay and the defensive staff was really surprised that we thought they'd line up and ba be balanced and try to hammer us. And so we had to throw that whole game plan out and start over because they threw it 56 times. And none of us would have thought that last week. And with young guys, it's harder to play them when you, you're not playing the game plan that you practiced all week. So um, it, it's a great question. It's, it's something that uh, it's the reason I thought we wouldn't be as good as everybody thought we should be this year because we've got too many young people that haven't played enough that need to be playing for next year. They need to be playing for the latter part of the season, uh, but they're not ready yet to win the game. So it's, it's just a, that's a, that's a real uh, quandary that we're in right now of, of when to play them, how much to play them. And as the head coach, I sat there yesterday and said, I, I can sit here and tell you all this. It, uh, I think it's the most important thing we're doing right now is trying to figure out uh, how do we get the, the young guys in the game enough to get them ready to play, rest the older guys, but still win the game. And, and each position's got to do it differently. And I said, not only substitute, but uh, don't substitute when we've got them backed up inside the 10. Don't substitute when, when they're, they're about to score. Uh, substitute in the middle. Substitute from 20 to 20 and, and, and let them play some and, and get some experience when it – it, it's not in uh, either end where it's going to cost points. And on uh, Monday, you mentioned you're friends with Justin Fuente. Um, I was wondering, are you, are there any guys you're not friends with? How are you friends with everybody? How do you become so well liked? I mean, do you, are there any enemies out there that are college coaches? Uh, Ross, there, there are obviously enemies out there that just wouldn't say it publicly, but there, but there are. All of us have those. Um, I've been so lucky that I was the president of the American Football Coaches Association, and I was on that board for like 17 years. So I was involved a lot with coaches and, and talking to them and asking them questions and what they thought. Uh, we even, <clears throat> when I was president, we had a, a survey we were trying to figure out in recruiting, and Bob Stoops and Oklahoma were our big rivals. I sent it to Bob and said, hey, would you all look at this? We, we fight each other in recruiting every day. What do you think of these rules? And, and then sent it to a bunch of coaches. And then even more than that, um, your all's relationship sometime is more difficult with coaches than mine was in my five years because it, uh, I was in a tough spot with TV because the coaches liked me. And I, I got to know them, but I, I had to tell the truth. And, and sometimes that wasn't very comfortable. But for... Um, for those three years that I, I'd call games on Friday night, Memphis played in a lot of those games. Mike Norvell played in those games, and he was the offensive coordinator at Memphis. And 
uh, Jay Bateman played in those games. And uh, so a, a lot of these coaches, uh, I did Jeff Collins games at Temple. Um, I did Matt Rule's games at Temple. Uh, so when you study them all week, uh, a lot of times I would even talk to the coaches during the week about what they were going to do. And then I had my meeting with them uh, before and some would call me and ask me afterwards. I did Dave Doran's games. I did Duke's games. I did Wake Forest games. I did Louisville's games. Um, so uh, I really think Ross, more than anything else, I, I try to be honest. I really care about the game. I care about coaches. It sounds facetious every week when I say, I like this guy, he's doing a good job coaching. It's really not. I do like the coaches. I don't get in fights with coaches that, that we play. I'm not one of those that has to hate one of our opponents. I've, I've never been that way. I worry about us more than I worry about them. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I was thinking that the other day. In fact, the coaches asked me in the staff meeting, is there anybody that doesn't like you? And I thought about it for a minute and I, I had a few that I could pull out. And they said, is there anybody that you don't like? And there were a few, but, but they're, they're very, very few. And I, I really respect and like college coaches and, and, and what they do for young people. Great, thank you. Thank you, Ross. All right, let's close up today with Brendan Marks. Brendan, go ahead. Hey, Mac, thanks for taking the time. Uh, you had mentioned after the game on Saturday that you're learning to appreciate the wins more now than, than even if you guys didn't play well than you did at Texas. And today you say, you know, we're, you know, maybe politically trying to push people to vote. That wasn't something I always did in the past. It, it sounds a lot like you're still learning a lot about yourself as a coach and how to grow and evolve even through just a year and a half here so far. I'm just wondering how much do you feel like you've grown and evolved both as a person and as a you know leader of men since you've been back in Chapel Hill the second time? Oh gosh, Brendan, I think I've grown uh, probably as, as much as at any time in my life since I left Texas. You, you get so wrapped up for 31 years in your little routine and you don't even know what's going on outside that the walls of that program and it's it's not healthy sometimes it's just it's just the next week and you got to win every game and, and that's who you are and your identity becomes how many games you win and it's it's not healthy it's 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 hard and therefore you're not very happy because if you were, were 25 and two in that two year period i mentioned and miserable because we lost two and i i don't remember the 25 i remember the two and that's not fair. That's not healthy. It's it's not it's not good for the for the kids or or your family. But uh, going to to TV, I was able to to see the world differently than I did from those walls. Um, and and uh, that's why I said when I came back here, I will be a better coach now than I've ever been. Uh, ho hopefully, that probably means I would be a better person now than I've ever been, because I I see things differently. Uh, I see you all differently. Than I did. I, I never hated media, but I, I'm not as I wasn't as open as, as I'm sure as I go back and look at it as I am now. Uh, I want to help you with your jobs, but at the same time, I want to tell you the truth. And as long as it doesn't affect one of our players or, or one of our coaches, um, and then at the same time, there there are things like the um, social justice issues. Um, I, I want to help. I, I want to use this platform to help and. Uh, at one point in my career, I, I would have wanted equality. I'm not sure I would have spoken up. And, and um, like the same reason I'm being more open with you. Same thing with voting. I never thought about it. I said, I asked Coach Royal, the, the legendary coach at Texas, what about voting and what about politics? And he said, you go to the Capitol, you enjoy their parties. When they get ready to vote, you leave, man. Get out of there because you, you've got half the country mad at you anyway. You don't need the other half mad because uh, you're not going to vote like they want you to vote. So um, what, what I'm learning is my, my real job is to mentor kids. That's my job. And, and no better time to do it than this awful time in our country's life. This awful time. So if anybody said, are you disappointed you came back and you've had to coach in COVID that is so different, I would say I, I'm, I'm, um, it's different, but... I'm so lucky I came back because what I missed was mentoring kids and they need help now more than any other time in their lives. I told them today, just, just, just look at the, there's a hurricane hitting uh, Louisiana and, and pray for those people. They, they've already been hit too many times. And, but LSU is moving their game. It sounds like to Missouri, 
I said, guys, if, if a hurricane had hit here, they might say, hey, we're moving the game to Virginia Tech. And what you got to do in, in 2020 is be ready for that. At some point, that would have been a real crisis in your life. I can't do that, man. My parents are coming here. No, nah, you, you just handle it. So the things that these young people are learning right now will help them so much when they're running their own families and they're running their own businesses. And, and so in, an, in an, uh, a very unusual way, uh, they're learning really, really hard lessons that most people do not have an opportunity to learn. And, and as, I was, uh, as I was pouting in the spring, and got down and, and um, I mean, can't imagine people not being able to feed their kids. I'll have to be careful not to get emotional here. I can't imagine people getting kicked out of their houses and we're gonna have homeless people. I can't imagine people losing their jobs. It's just, uh, you just can't, and I can't imagine 210,000 people dying. Uh, the fear that, that we all see about getting this, this virus and that you could die very easily and very quickly. And when does it stop? When do we get our lives back? So I went through a, a tough time this spring. I couldn't see the players. We couldn't have staff meetings. We're on Zoom. Everything's on Zoom. I couldn't see you all. And I'm a, I'm a person that likes to be around people. I like to pick at people. I like to have fun. Uh, and, and I couldn't do any of that. And, and that's when um, Sally and I sat down and had a really hard conversation. And the conversation came back to, what's your job? I mean, we need to win games. We need to make money for the university. We need to represent the university, right? But my job and what I really missed the most was mentoring young people. And it's, it's uh, never been more needed than right now. So that, that's, and I've got to be strong and I've got to be upbeat and I've got to be positive uh, to make sure that they understand that they can be because a lot of things they love has been taken away from them. And, and that's a, it's, it's a really tough time for mental health. Uh, you, you just, you, you sit and look at all the, the things that are bad that are going up during this pandemic. It's a, it's a, an awful time in our lives that, that we all have to pull together and, and help each other. And then in, in closing, and that's the way I handle our team. I said, um, don't worry about Virginia Tech. They're going to play good. They're a really good team. Worry about you. What we don't want to do is not play our best on Saturday. Then we feel bad and guilty and we're not sure what should have happened or would have happened. And you don't get Saturday back. You don't get Wednesday's practice back. So uh, play your best on Saturday. If they play better than we do, hey, pat them on the back and say, good job. And let's go to Florida State. But let's don't walk in here and talk about, how oh, we didn't have energy. We weren't very tough. We, we messed all these things up. Let's play our best. And if our best isn't good enough, we'll all be fine with that. And, and we'll keep trying to get better. Thank you, Mac. Appreciate it. Thank you, Brendan. Coach, we really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all be safe. Will you be at the game Saturday now? Are you coming or do you not come or?